This morning's scripture is going to come from Psalms. We're going to go right to the very first Psalm, Psalm 1. Give you a chance to get there in your Bibles. Blessed is the one who does not walk in step with the wicked, or stand in the way that sinners take, or sit in the company of mockers, but whose delight is in the law of the Lord, and who meditates on this law day and night. That person is like a tree planted by streams of water, which yields its fruit in season, and whose leaf does not wither. Whatever they do prospers. Not so the wicked. They are like the chaff that the wind blows away. Therefore the wicked will not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the assembly of the righteous. For the Lord watches over the way of the righteous. But the way of the wicked leads to destruction. That's been the reading of the word. Thanks be to God. Has anyone else noticed the unraveling of the world as of late. Things seem to be spiraling, spiraling in a negative way. Has anyone else noticed that? Yeah. Especially with, with, you know, the current endemic, as they say, pandemic, endemic. Yeah. I guess we're in an endemic now. And I read a staggering statistic this week. One in three Christians now do not attend church, either online or in person. One in three. That's mind-blowing to me. And people now are just thinking about what can I do for me? Has anyone seen the movie Iron Lady? It's on Amazon right now. Most of y'all know that I do a lot of movie watching. That's where I get my stress relief. Anyway, Iron Lady is a movie about uh, I'm drawing a blank. Margaret Thatcher, thank you. Uh, it's played by Meryl Streep. She has a, a really, what I think is a profound quote. She says in the movie, she says, It used to be that people wanted to do something. But now, it seems that people want to be something. And what I take from that is, in the past, people wanted to do and create something that was for the good. Instead of now, with the age of technology, it's all about, I want to be the number one whatever. I want to have millions in the bank. I want to have... 100,000, 3 million followers on Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, whatever. So we lose that feeling of good. So I look at this, this verse here, and right off the bat, the first word, blessed. So you go to the dictionary and you look up blessed. Does anyone know what, what the word blessed means? I didn't know until this week. I'm going to share it though. Happy. Happy. In fact, what led me to this is the New Revised Standard Vision. I'm going to read the first part of Psalms, the first uh, verse to you. Happy are those who do not follow the advice of the wicked or take the path that sinners tread, or sit in the seat of scoffers. Blessed is the one who does not walk. Kind of changeable, isn't it? 
So it's kind of kind of funny that while we're in this day right now, and as you read through Psalms, if blessed means happy. I find it interesting as you go through Psalms, blessed, blessed, blessed. It says it all through the book of Psalms. And Psalm 1 is kind of the summarization of Psalms. So it sounds like to me the psalmist wants us to be happy. But now, again, we're in that day where you would think that we should be the happiest of all time. We're, we're living longer. The medicine is great. The technology that we have. Think about this for those that are older than me. 20 years ago, I was joking there. If 20 years ago we presented a cell phone like we have today, and someone looked at it, if you looked at that 20 years ago, your mind is blown. 20 years ago, would we have understood that cell phone today? I know you would, Elizabeth, you were too young. <laughs> But with the technology we have now, we, yeah, and you know, I love statistics. And they've done all these statistics on, you know, the boomers, the, the Gen X. Now they're coming out with statistics on Gen Z. And would you believe that the Gen Z population, you know, they have this, uh, thing that the idea of success is how much money and fame you have in the bank and on social media. That's your keys to success. How many followers do you have? How much money do you have in the bank? Because they're watching on YouTube or uh, what, what's the other big Instagram? Twitter. Twitter, I think Twitter's for the older folks. Am I right, Elizabeth? I think TikTok's a bit older. TikTok, thank you. Yeah. You see all these, the, the richer, the, the stars that are taking these big, lavish, expensive vacations, but are they happy? Look at Pharrell Williams, he wrote a song, Happy, Despicable Me, everybody know it? What happened to Pharrell Williams a year after that song became popular? Committed suicide. Suicide is one of the leading causes of death among our young youth right now. Yet, with all our technology, you know, a hundred years ago, 200 years ago, people were theoretically happier. They didn't have phones. They didn't have Instagram or TikTok. Shoot, they didn't even have electricity. But they were happy. They weren't bored. They found things to do. They had things to do. Could it be maybe that our technology has given us too much. Now, technology in and it, it, you know, in and itself is not bad. You know, it's it's it is it's a thing. It's a tool, but it's how it's used. And we've we've got you know such a problem with suicide. You know, the soldiers, one in eleven are committing sooner. The youth are committing suicide at a folks who if you're if you're contemplating suicide, it is a 
permanent solution to a temporary problem. Let me say that again. It is a permanent solution to a temporary problem. We can work through those issues. So let me get back to the verse here. Happy is the one who does not walk in step with the wicked, blessed, or stand in the way of the sinner's take, or sit in the company of mockers. Do we notice a pattern here? We're walking, we're sitting, we're standing. I'm going to get back to that. But whose delight is in the law of the Lord, and who meditates on the law day and night. What this psalmist is doing is saying, if you want to be happy, I'm going to tell you how to be happy. But I'm going to first tell you how not to be happy so that you can know how to be happy. It first says, it says, Happy is the one who does not walk in step with the wicked. If I go to the other one, it says, who does not follow the advice of the wicked. Let me ask you, who do you listen to the most? Who is it that you listen to more than anybody else? And that person will give you the worst advice of anybody. It's ourselves. <laughs> ourselves. We listen to ourselves more than we listen to anybody. You know, this, anybody seen that cartoon with the, the, the white devil and the red devil, or the white angel and the red devil on each shoulder talking to us? I'm guilty. I listen to it. You know what? Yeah. If I take that piece of candy and eat it, I know I'm diabetic, but that looks good. There's nobody around. Nobody will know. It's okay. But is it right? Is it right? When we go down that slippery, uh, C.S. Lewis, he made a statement, he said, the, the safest route to hell is that gradual, steady slope. That one, two percent grade, the, the, bottom, the, the ground is soft and flush, it's comfortable. There's no stop signs, there's no turns. It's just a gradual, gradual road, sleeping ever downward. So we start out with that piece of candy. We, we do what it is that we know we're not supposed to, but nobody will know it's okay. And we get comfortable with it. And then finally we get to a point where we sit down and we just absorb it. We sit in the company of scoffers. Ah, don't tell me. You don't know what you're talking about. It's okay. I've done it before. It's going to be okay. You've gotten used to it. You're going down that steady slope down into the rabbit hole. And you're telling other people, it's okay, you can do it. And all of a sudden, you stand up. You're practicing the sin. You no longer think it's wrong. You're walking, people tell you. You sit down and absorb it. You stand up and practice it. That's the way to unhappiness. 
Because if you go down that slippery slope and, and gradually fall down into hell, how much happiness are you going to find in hell? When you finally get to the bottom, what is there for you? I don't want to find out. But there's a way out. Whose delight is in the law of the Lord who meditates on this law day and night? So what is the law of the Lord? It's kind of like when you, you buy a piece of property and you've got young kids, are you young as you remember this, you buy this piece of property, and it's by a freeway. There's cars zooming by, and you've got a, a little four or five year old. What's the first thing you're gonna do when you build that house? You're gonna put up a fence. And you're gonna, you're gonna tell that four or five year old, Junior, you can have anything here inside the fence. You can play with everything. You can swim in the pool with supervision. But you can have it, just don't go outside the fence. A car will run over you. And Junior, if you have one like, like Angel, the pop-up, I don't know what, I've never experienced being hit by a car. Why can't I go out there? Angel would say that. Because you want to keep them safe. Everyone knows the story in the Garden of Eden. Satan is always telling us to go outside that fence. And he starts it slowly. He says, hey, Adam, Eve, did God really tell you you couldn't touch this tree? No. God never said they couldn't touch the tree. He said they couldn't eat the fruit. So he brought them in gradually, thinking that they were Hey, that's the tree. See, you got away with it. You can go a little further. Y'all see how this works? But if you stay inside these boundaries and read, meditate, you know, since, since uh, y'all have uh, elected me to be in this position, I have absorbed so much from just doing just that. Meditating on the words that come out of this history right here. This ancient Hebrew history. And one of the footnotes in, in my big one here, it has a and I'm not quite sure how you say it. But one of the words it used for a person that was doing, that was really skilled is, I'm going to try it. A shri, which is a, a, literally means on the right track or a person that is really skilled at life. And they would say that when a person is walking and being successful, that they were a shri. On the right track. And you hear so many people now in their unhappiness say, well, how did things go off track? Has anybody ever heard that? I've said it. Until yesterday, 
I did not even know that was biblical. But it literally means on the right track. It's a Hebrew word. I think it's Hebrew. Correction, it's Greek. The person is like a, stree, a tree planted by streams of water, which yields its fruit in season. I think that is important too. The, the tree that's planted by streams of water. And I, I think about that and I remember when the last hurricane came through and I had a bunch of pine trees in my yard that were, and the roots sticking up in the air. And I got that weeping willow back there in the backyard that is a mess. It leaves, the leaves are horrible, but it doesn't go anywhere. And I asked someone, you know, why couldn't that darn tree go away? Because that's the one that I'd have rather. Those roots go deep and they find the water. In fact, I was told that a weeping willow can absorb up to 100 gallons of water a day. So it plants its roots deeply and wide. So that when the storm comes, the top will sway, the base stands right there. That's kind of what we want to do. We want to plant the roots deeply. You know, we've got our, it's, it's kind of, you remember a couple weeks ago we were, when we were in John and we talked about the, uh, the grapevines that were 300 years old? they were cared for the vine is the word the leaves are us trying to hang on and God is the pruner the gardener so we want to be that that tree which yields its fruit in season the in season is very important is every season going to be a fruit-bearing season? No. Some seasons are very bare, and I think right now we are in a bare season. Ain't no fruit coming out right now. But we still need to take care and protect ourselves read, absorb, and meditate on the word so that we do not become that pine tree that gets uprooted and its, its roots just go. The wicked are like the chaff. And I didn't know, does anybody know what chaff is? I didn't until I looked it up. It's the outer husk of a seed that they, they kind of pound and, and uh, they just crack away from the seed to get to the good part and they just throw it away and it's good for nothing. And God's not saying that if you, if you sin you're good for nothing because guess what, we're all sinners. But the acts are good for nothing. So if you want to be happy, we stay out of that slippery slope, don't we? We stay in the perimeter of the fence and we absorb God's word to find peace. Amen? Amen. And then the Lord will watch over the way of the righteous. And the way of the wicked leads to destruction. So we got two paths. Which path are you going to choose? It's kind of like a fork in the road. This one's going north and south, not east and west. So as Billy comes forward this morning, 
If there was anyone here this morning that we do have communion. Let us turn to page twelve. Got caught up in myself. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin, and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. Skip down to the great thanksgiving. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to our Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. And so, with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, Hosanna in the good, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Holy are you and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body, to which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples, and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of these, your mighty acts of Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us. As we proclaim the mystery of faith, Christ has died, Christ has risen, Christ will come again. Pour out on your Holy Spirit on us gathered here, and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body of blood in Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ. Redeemed by his blood, by your Spirit make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world. Until Christ comes in final victory, and we feast at his heavenly banquet, through your Son, Jesus Christ, with your Holy Spirit and your Holy Church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. I let be the... Remember, I blank. Uh, our Father, who art in heaven, how that be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. can't believe I did that.
think we can probably all come forward.